Welcome back designers. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the image trace tool. Now, before I get started, do me a quick favor. After you're done watching, let me know if you prefer this format of video, uh, as opposed to my previous videos where I kind of had that talking head thing at the beginning. Um, if you like this better or we just jump straight in, let me know in the comments and I'll continue doing it. I'm gonna try this for a few different videos and we'll see kind of how things go. So to start with, we're gonna place a couple of images on our artboard. Now for that, I'm gonna go up to File, down to Place. You notice here you can also do Shift, Command, P, which would be Shift, Control, P on a PC. I'm gonna click on that. We're gonna have two different images here. Now I've got kind of two different scenarios. Um, one is you've worked with a client, they've sent you a logo and they want you to create a banner or a billboard or something large, but the only logo they have is a JPEG or a PNG file from their website. We all know that's not gonna work, so you need to trace this, convert it into a vector so you can blow it up, make it bigger and use it for the pieces that you need. The other one, for whatever reason, you messed up, you created this piece of artwork inside of Illustrator, you forgot to save the AI file or an SVG file or some other vector format. Now all you're left with is a JPEG and you need to be able to make adjustments to this and your only option is to be able to come back in, image trace it and, and go from there. So these are the two images we're gonna work with. Now, when I place things on the artboard, I don't just click, I like to drag. So you've got both of them loaded here. You can see the one of two there. So we're, we're dropping the first one down. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna click in the corner and hold my mouse button down and just drag down to this bottom corner. It constrains proportions for you already. Um, you could even try this with like a rectangle. It'll keep it in the rectangle shape. You don't have to hold down shift or anything. You just go ahead and, and click and hold and then drag your image out. I'll do the same thing here for this little M logo. And we'll get started. Now, to get your options for uh, the image trace, you first need to select an image. So it doesn't matter which one you click on. I'm gonna go with the anchor first. I'm gonna command zero, just to zoom in on this one so that it's kind of the primary focus. And you'll notice up here at the top, we now have image trace. And if we click this little arrow beside image trace, it gives us a few presets. Now I'm not gonna go through all these presets. You can do that in your own time. Just know that they're there. There's various options depending on kind of what you're working with. I don't do image tracing on photos a lot because I personally, I don't like the outcome of it. I don't like the look of it afterwards. Um, so normally I'm doing things that are kind of a limited palette. If you've got stuff that has gradients in it, you can get into a whole world of speed issues, I'm gonna say, if you're on a slower system because each one of the gradient sort of rows or bands is gonna end up being converted into a vector shape. Sometimes that can end up being thousands and thousands and thousands of shapes inside of an image trace. So for this one, we're actually just gonna go with six colors. Now six colors isn't enough. You're gonna notice that part of this is gonna disappear. The wood grain and the pink are gonna vanish on us. Not a big deal. We can get them back through our settings. So in order to get to our settings, I'm gonna keep this selected and we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click on this little box here that's gonna give us our image trace panel. You can also get to that if you wanted to through window and then down to image trace. If you use this quite a bit, you might wanna set up your own keyboard shortcut for it. Personally, I don't use it very often. Um, I make sure to save my vector files and usually I ask for logos in vector format. Again, if it's a client that doesn't have it, this is where you would kinda of wanna know how to use this. And because we're only six colors, we've lost a couple of things. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adjust that. And in order to adjust that, we've got a little color slider here. Now, so we lost two colors. We could go a little more than that. We could go up to like nine. I'm gonna stick with eight. So I'm just gonna change that. and I'm gonna tab out of the box. And again, every time you make a change on this panel, Illustrator needs to rework the trace. So if you're on a slower system, Sometimes this can be a time consuming process because each time that you make a change to kind of go through and see what you need to adjust, Illustrator is gonna have to update the drawing. It's just one of those things. I, it used to frustrate the heck out of me, but now that I'm on an M1, I don't have to worry about it. It's actually a pretty quick system. We're pretty good as far as adjustments go here. I don't think we really need to change anything else, um, but just to kind of cover these, the colors, you're only gonna see colors if you're on a color setting. So if you move into a different setting, which we will once you move over to the logo, you'll see that this will change into threshold. 
and threshold is a different beast other than colors. So colors, you just kind of set your base either two to 30 when you're on um, one of these, these sort of base color settings. So like the three to 16 colors, if you go up to a high fidelity photo, that's going to be a little bit more paths. Um, so here, the higher the number, the tighter the fit it's going to be, right? So you're not going to have as many issues. So this one, I mean, depending on what you're working with, you can probably push this up a little and you'll see some cleaner lines. You see a little bit better definition on the design or on the trace that you're going through. Like if you notice, we actually had a little spot here where it was kind of rounded and it didn't quite complete the circle. Let me just back up. I'll just command Z here so you can see what I'm talking about. And that's going to put it back down to 50 and you'll see here how this loop on the anchor leads right up into the rope well if we put this back up to that 75 and just watch this section right in here it's going to clean that up a little bit now i don't recommend going to 100 um, going up to 100 percent you can run into some issues as well it's not always the best thing to go to 100 percent, but again play with the settings on here so now corners, again, a higher number color or corner emphasis, the higher value means more corners. So if you want to have more corners on this, if you're, you're you know, a, a design that's a little bit smoother, let's push this one up to about 80 and let it go. I didn't really need to. It didn't make a lot of difference on this piece uh, that that pads is really all we needed to worry about. But again, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for just trying new settings all the time. And then here it reduces noise by ignoring areas of specified pixel size. So higher value means less noise. So right now um, we're at 15. Let's just pump this up just a little bit. And it's just gonna clean up your designs a little. Now, the best thing I can say, and I say this in a lot of my videos, is get in and play with these tools. See what you can do. You can learn enough by seeing sort of what to click on and what not to click on when you're watching videos like this, but the best way to do it, go to Google, download some images, um, do a search for, you know, vector art, do a search for uh, vector logo, download the JPEGs and the PNGs and just test these out, see what you can do with tracing. The one caveat that I need to make there, please, please, please don't download JPEGs of artwork that you like, image trace them and sell them off or, or give them off as your own artwork. Just because you can trace it doesn't mean you should. Um, and especially don't do it and try and pass it off as your own work. All right, so now that we have this done, I'm kind of happy with where this is sitting, but this still isn't a vector. Um, if I were to move this, everything is going to move as an image. And we can tell because we have that X across here. So it's still an image right now. But what we can do is we can actually go here and we can come down and go to outlines with image source. And that cyan line that you see on there, that's going to be what our vector is. So I like doing this before I expand anything, just to kind of make sure that everything kind of fits and that there's no weird shapes that are going on. So it's, I'm not getting like weird rounded corners where it should be squared or I'm not getting squared corners where it should be rounded. I'm pretty happy with what the result is going to be on this. So now that I've seen this, I can go ahead and up here at the top, we're gonna to click on expand. And what that's done now is it's actually converted to a vector. So if I hit A on my keyboard to get my direct selection tool, you can now see all the anchor points that we've got. And so with this, this is actually a vector artwork now. So we can go in and make a changes and, and make adjustments to whatever we need to. Now, the one thing I should say, I'm just gonna hit Shift Command A to deselect everything. You're gonna see issues like this. Okay, it, it's just bound to happen um, where two intersecting paths, you're gonna have kind of artifacts left over, um, things that you're gonna have to possibly go in and fix. Just depends on your client. And I don't wanna say how picky they are, but just how precise of artwork they need in these instances. If you understand Illustrator though, you know how to use the pen tool. Most of this stuff is pretty easy cleanup. Um, me personally, if I were doing this and it was going on like a t-shirt or a sticker or something, I probably wouldn't worry about this too much. There's a couple of spots that I would probably go in and clean up like this section here. Um, maybe these corners and probably smooth this line out. But most of that could be done by just altering the black 
bringing it to the front and smoothing everything out there because then everything in behind it's not going to matter okay all right so that's a basic color correction or color conversion for an image trace now the logo is actually a little bit simpler because we're only dealing with two colors we're dealing with a black and white logo so i'm going to go ahead and click on this one and and again i'm just going to go to a preset and we're just going to do black and white logo pretty straightforward i mean it made the change we didn't even really notice it happen there's nothing that I really need to worry about here as far as settings go or sliders go. You could play with these a little bit. So again, like I said, this switched over to threshold, right? So pixels darker than the threshold value are converted to black. What that means, I mean, if we go up here, so now our value is 255. So any pixels that are darker than 255 are converted over to black, which means we're gonna get nothing but a black image. So if I just knock this down just a little bit, I think we can actually even go to like 254 and it's still gonna stay there, but you'll notice we start to get these little artifacts around there. So normally I think around like 170 is a good setting when you're dealing with just black and white logos. Paths, you don't have to worry about as much. Again, if you're dealing with black and white, basic shapes, but get in here and play. The one setting that I always turn on when I'm dealing with a black and white logo is ignore white. And what that's gonna do, let's actually, let's expand this without the ignore white. So we're just gonna go expand. So what we've got here then, once it's expanded, is we've got this white box. Now, it's easy enough to come in here and just, you know, V on my keyboard, double click into this to get into isolation mode and just delete that white square out of there. There's one step that you could have done just inside of the actual image trace that you wouldn't have to worry about that. So let's just back up here. I'm gonna command Z. Not too far. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna click on ignore white. Then we're gonna expand it. And you'll see our bounding box now is just around the logo. So the one issue that we've got with this one, of course, is that now if we were to take this logo and put it over, let's say, let me just grab this and paste this in behind. there you'll see that this is now see-through right so it's it's become transparent there which if you're looking for a transparent logo that's great this is perfect if not what you could do is just come onto this ungroup release compound path and then just turn this into a white piece if you needed to most of the time it's probably not going to be a big issue because you're going to be exporting this as a png file or another vector file in which case you would probably want that to be transparent anyways if it was white in the design i don't know why somebody would leave it white but i just wanted to show you that just to be sure all right designers i hope that covers everything i mean there's a lot to talk about inside of the image trace but most of it you're not gonna use on a regular basis. And so, and I mean, everything on my channel, I'm all about showing you kind of the actual most useful pieces of information that I can provide you so that you're not thinking that, wow, that's intimidating. There's like five different sliders and three drop downs and seven buttons. And I mean, yeah, you might run into times where you're gonna need them down the road, but for the most part, this is what you're gonna be doing with Image Trace. This is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm not gonna get into that whole spiel. You know the deal. Thanks for watching. Get out there and design something and I'll see everybody in the next video.